They had fought so hard in their second liberation struggle as they pushed for the return of multi-party democracy in Kenya, forming a formidable and politically potent movement, Ford, that was arguably termed as the game changer that would push the ruling Kanu party out of power. However, the giant movement that had brought together opposition political giants would crumble, handing Kanu a political lifeline for the next 10 years. Up next, the making and the disintegration of Ford, the untold story. My name is Duncan Haimba. The 1990-1991 Second Liberation Struggle yielded a new dawn in Kenya's political landscape. It was a hard-fought struggle by opposition progressive forces that had the backing of a section of church leaders, high court advocates, civil society organizations, university students, and even the international community. It was a push that brought together a constellation of political heavyweights in Kenya, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Pius Masinde Muliro, Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba, Charles Wanyui Kerubia are the elders who teamed up with young tax, including James Orengo, Paul Muite, Gitobi Manyara, Kiraito Murungi, Njeru Kadangu, Anyang Nyongo and Mhisa Kitui, among others. And on Friday, August 2nd, 1991, the team comprising of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Masinde Muliro, George Nthenge, Martin Shikuku, Philip Gashoka and Ahmed Bamariz formed the Forum for Restoration of Democracy, Ford, which was the first opposition party in Kenya since Jaramogi Oginga Odinga's Kenya's People Union, which was proscribed in 1969 by government. Sasa, wanachama Ford Kenya, Tungependa sasa ile simba mama mashauri. However, by August 1992, Ford had split into two factions, owing to differences between Jaramogi Oginga Odinga and Kenneth Matiba. Ford, was Matiba and Jaramogi, disagreed. I was in Ford myself, because I came from retreation earlier than Matiba, I was a, a position in Ford. I was a fundraiser and I raised a lot of money for Ford under Jaramogi then. Uh, but when Matiba came out, Matiba refused to accept Raira, uh, Odinga, as the only Ford candidates for presidency. The other members said, but Jaramogi is, is, is the, pre the president of Ford now. Why don't we accept it? And we took a lot of persuasion. I and uh, Maina Wanjiri and uh, Titus Mbathi, Matera Kereri, tried to talk to Matiba quietly. Accept Jaramogi. Seasoned politician Gitobi Manyara, who also played an integral role in the struggle, says the Matiba Jaramogi divide was unexpected after such a grueling push to oust Kanu from power. It is a Jaramogi Ginga Odinga faction of Ford that had a vision for Kenya. Yes. Matiba was a hero. Uh, Matiba represented what ought to have been Kenya, the vision of Kenya uh, in terms of the laissez-faire capitalist uh, um, Western style um, economic uh, uh, policies and decisions. The two opposition leading lights went their separate ways but were politically conjoined twins. They would not let go of the name Ford Thus, Jaramogi and his team remained with Ford Kenya, and Matiba picked Ford Asili. Uh, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga represented uh, the, not the Marxist, because uh, Jaramogi was never a Marxist, but a people's uh, 
approach to development. And it was natural, given uh, uh, my days, uh, my, my participation in uh, university politics and uh, uh, my time at the Nairobi Law Monthly that I would identify with Jeramogi uh, because we had a vision, we were principled. Uh, it was principled decision politics. Those who didn't take principled decisions uh, um, um, swam with the current in order to retain offices, so they kept shifting positions and they will remain in office. Those are the people who govern Kenya, unfortunately. That is a sad commentary on Kenyan politics. Uh, the Home Guards, whom we fought to remove in order to ensure that uh, Kenya does take um, anti-colonial um, independence politics, uh, succeeded the colonial government. So the Home Guards became the Kenya that uh, represented uh, the independent Kenya. Apparently, Matiba had rejected Jaramogi's candidature from the onset, even as he sought treatment in London. Unknown to Kenyans, delegations flew to London seeking to convince him as he lay on his hospital bed to back Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, but the mediation failed. What were the reasons that Matiba felt it can't be Jaramogi? Matiba was very well, uh, truthfully speaking, it's just stubborn. I made some notes because I went to London to see Matiba on this issue. And I have a small book where I made notes. I was suggesting to Kip Matiba, look, Jaramogi, the old man now, elderly, he's been in opposition for all these years. You accept him as president and you be the vice president. If you don't want to be uh, below him, then it's going to be awkward. Because the unity of us is non-tribal. We don't want any issues that you are a Kikuyu and Jaramogi is a We don't want the Jews and the Kikuyu to fight. That was. And I went with Nyanja. We went to Nyanja. We talked to him. And even uh, Moite in London. Because Matiba had a flat in London. We were talking there. And Jeremy, a rider was passing through from Sweden, he also joined us. That is the truth of the matter. But Matipa, because of his stubbornness, his whole outfit was hijacked by Kanu without him knowing. And uh, they made sure that Matipa's strong people Ousted. That's when people like Imondo were taken by the city. And Matiba was not really, although we told him, didn't bother. He said, no. But that is something, something I never said in public. But that is the truth of the matter. Matiba himself thought he was more power, popular than Yaramogi. And to that extent, he was right. Because he defeated even Jarabogi in the election. Who else? There was another one who stood at that time, Kibaki. He also defeated Kibaki. Senior counsel and politician Paul Kibugi Mwite, a young tuck in the struggle, says only one thing motivated and catalyzed the disintegration of Ford. The issue of ethnicity uh, reality which wasn't there when we were fighting for the second liberation, and which we knew retired President Moy had used very effectively to hold on to power. Moy Kibake, who never participated in the second liberation, soon as Section 2A was repealed, he forgot about the Mugumo tree and the razor blade and formed his own party. OK? Then, my dear friend Matiba, who we had agreed, let's leave it to Jaramogi because of his contribution from before 63. Again, 
uh, was prevailed upon by members of my own community to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> and and, and th th that, that's how Moy came back. This is KTN News. To the outer framers, the turtleneckers, the fringe girls, you don't need to hide anymore. Try Dettel Eventone. It cleans and helps to reduce the appearance of blemishes caused by oil, dirt and germs, giving your skin a healthy feel. Dettel, be 100% sure. The Queen of Africa, Yemi Alade, is coming to Kenya for something you've never seen before. The best of contemporary African music, where meat meets music. Keep the date at KICC, 6 p.m. till dawn. Come party with our very own Saudi Soul. I see you came to party. Willie Pose. King Kaka. I say Nikondani. Fena Gitu. Calibras Jones. I go by the OG. The console. There's no chance for a dull moment. Early bird, 750 shillings for regular tickets, 2,500 for VIP. Gate is 1,000 shillings. Regular, 3,000 shillings for VIP. Empress pay bill number 365582. Account name, Choma Nangoma. Choma Nangoma. On single file. And as you get ready, we've got the news ready for you. Start your day with the latest in the world of news of devolution. Catch up with the sporting activity that took place over the weekend. Francis Rogoy, who is really showing us how this game is played. Let's get financially intelligent with your money. Keep healthy on your health. I'm seeing my waru there, I can see my tomato. Progesterone, yes, can cause some degree of weight gain. Let's put our pulse on the nation, on state of the nation. The logic of privatization is profit. And kick off the weekend in style with entertainment news. Where we need to go is church. A story about what the things that are happening in Kenya. And there was three of them. Not to do the things I've done. Walk away from trouble when you can. The ruling Jogo party Kanu knew the political tide was against it. The Independence Party took advantage of the divisions in Ford and also unleashed its counter-strategies. After all, they say in the world of politics, 
What counts at the end of the day is strategy. So what really catalyzed the split? And were they ideological differences or parochial interests? Actually, it was sponsored by the system. Um, don't forget Moy calls himself the professor of uh, uh, politics. And serious observers and serious students of that period of Kenyan history will definitely see the government hand. That was the only way that Kano was going to come back and uh, they zoned the country into areas uh, along which they would vote so that Moi could win. Uh, in Mount Kenya region, for example, I remember the day uh, Kenneth Matiba wasn't allowed to pass Rupingazi Bridge, uh, the, the river that uh, um, uh, marks the boundary between Embu and uh, Moranga or uh, uh, directions were given that he should not pass that bridge because Moi, uh, Kibaki and um, Matiba had taken the country by storm and the only way to prevent him from winning the presidency was to divide the Mount Kenya vote. So Kibaki was allowed to campaign in all parts of the country, Mary included, and you see that most of them voted that way because that was the state plan um, at that time. Uh, you recall that uh, uh, people voted strictly in accordance with the, um, the wishes of the Kano regime in terms of where people were allowed to, 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 to campaign. Uh, areas uh, where Moi couldn't campaign were left for Yaramogi and his people. But one of the enduring regrets is that as soon as Section 2A was repealed, the ethnic um, rivalry reared its head. And I want to say, as long as we use ethnicity as a tool for political mobilization, the vision and the dream we had will not be realized. It will only be realized when the Kenyan people realize Bay Yaunga Ekipanda Inapadia Muluya in Apadia Kisi, Mukamba, Mukikuyu, Kilamutu, Nauli, Ikipada. People being unable to access health services. In other words, Uchumi Ukizorota, Unazorotea, Kila Kabila. If we can be able to communicate that to the Kenyan people so that they start questioning political parties, so that political parties get reconfigured to focus on economic issues. What are your policies on education? How are you going to elevate poverty, health, you know, those issues that we see in stable democracies? We saw the dreams, the aspirations of the people uh, die. Uh, the, of the founding generation, uh, the very few led by Jaramogi remained true to that calling. And that is why we found ourselves, uh, and we suffered for it, because uh, unlike uh, Jaramogi, who uh, led a base that was with him, uh, we from Mount Kenya region went against the current, and we were punished for it. We continue to be punished for it. Yes, I felt pained that the principled stand we had taken was now overrun by the last uh, for power. But my position has always been that there are times when a leader must lead from the front so that you stand even on an issue that is unpopular at that particular moment in time, because in the long run, people will get to know that actually you are right down the road. That has been my life. That has been the story of my life. And that's how I conduct myself. For example, that's why I contested the elections uh, in, in, in 2013, because I wanted the platform to say the same things I'm saying today. Forget about this ethnic mobilization. Let's focus on economic social issues. 
That's one of the reasons I wanted that pl platform to say that. And secondly, to encourage your generation not to think that you must be the son or daughter of a major family uh, in order to become president. And I'm happy I'm seeing it happening. And I can see the Kenyan people are beginning to move towards that. So there are times when you've got to show leadership and sacrifice your personal uh, leadership. By the way, I mean, I tried Kibaki Matiba, I tried all I could. The opposition forces had also threatened to boycott the 1992 December 29th general election. It had its own irreducible minimums. That even at that time, we had actually wanted to boycott the elections, the first multi-party election, without a new constitution. We were prevailed upon by the Americans who had been our natural allies. They invited these bishops that you are talking about. And the bishops, all of them, Catholic, um, Anglican, Protestants, they came out with a statement calling on the opposition to participate in the elections. The point being made is that Rome was not built in a day. But we had said ourselves, repeal section 2A when the structures were still the structures of the one-party state. In including the electoral commission, Moy was not asking anybody on who to appoint to conduct the elections. On the other hand, Matiba's group had left Ford, but their new home, Ford Asili, was not yet registered. We were about to face a disqualification by the state at that time because there was no any registered party other than Ford. Those who had deserted the Jaramogi Axis sought refuge in the Kenya National Congress, KNC. They were Kenneth Matiba, Titus Mbadi, Kimani Wanyoike, Maina Wanjigi and Charles Rubia. Titus Mbadi was a chairman of KNC, which was a registered party. In case for the silly is refused registration. But Moi's government was smart. They waited until the last week they registered for the city. Eh? Now you can see, but people then said, that's my God, my party now for the city. Can you National Congress? Uh. He knew exactly what we were doing. I tried to consult him almost daily, going to his office, arguing about this. He had agreed that we can buy K KNC. But he himself, when a week or two weeks before his party or for us was registered, then he became very happy. I've got my party now. And clever people, quick people like Chikuku, rushed to Motiva as Secretary General. Of Ford Asili. KNC and Ford Asili represented one and the same thing, Matiba's Trump card. He was to vie for the presidency on either political party, depending on the circumstances. In a nutshell, Ford Asili and Kenya National were not different parties. But Ford Asili was then invaded by Outsiders like Shikoku was with us, but there was another story about that. Because he had gone to Moist and they were we going to get to Hali. You know the story? You've heard the story? Yes. <laughs> so he rushed. He got George Zenge. George Zenge was with Forasili. He defeated Maino Wanjigi. Charity Ngilu defeated Bathi. Karethi was defeated by Mother Karwa. Those were the people who rushed to Fort Asili quickly. Nyanja, who was a very strong man in Limuru, was defeated by somebody else. All of us 
who were with Matiba lost because Matiba and his team became unwilling in Mbaya, perhaps. I don't think Matiba knew what he was doing. The whole thing was hijacked by Moy's political system. Come December 29th, 1992, Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba contested the presidency on a Ford Asili ticket, but there was a problem. Although we took, Ken took part in that 1992 election, he was never the old Ken. He was very limited, he walked with a limp, he could not see very well, he could not read or write very well. As you know, we had issues uh, when we put the petition as to who signed the thing. Uh, he was, had been, he had already been destroyed. It was sheer determination of a man who never gives up that made him go through that election of 19. So the December 29, 1992 general election was held and as anticipated, the opposition's lack of cohesiveness, strategy and inability to form an alliance against Kanu, President Moy and his party remained firmly in control of both government and politics. The changes we wanted, the vision we had, the, the, the objective we had, would have been realized uh, much earlier. We had sat down. So me, I felt, let me stay uh, with Fort Kenya the way we had decided. Uh, Fort Kenya was to be destroyed thereafter by none other than Amolo, Raila Amolo Odinga, who again also started uh, practicing um, ethnic mobilization. And if truth be told even today, the two so-called dominant parties are practicing ethnic mobilization. Many other tribes, again, is these two. These two also mobilizing on the basis of the numbers they have. That will never take Kenya anywhere. That will continue to ruin the economy because that's what robs whoever is president the power to address the issue of corruption. So me, I'm happy. Uh, completely happy that I have not betrayed my vision, my principles, I made my contribution. And now it's for you people to do it. Duncan Hamba, The Untold Story.